Polo students, in this video we'll prove Moreira's theorem, which is a converse to the Cauchy-Gorsaw theorem. So let's recall that Cauchy-Gorsaw tells us the Cauchy-Gorsaw theorem says that if f maps is at omega into c is holomorphic, and T, a subset omega, is a triangle. That's continued omega. Then the integral over that triangle of f of zeta b zeta is equal to zero. That's the Cauchy Gorsaw. We already proved that. So we know that if I give you a holomorphic function in a triangle that's contained inside the region of holomorphicity, then if I integrate over that triangle with respect to this uh, d, z, d zeta, has to vanish, right? The integral of f has to vanish on that set. Beautiful. It's a very, very useful result, too. We'll prove, we'll get a whole bunch of really powerful applications from Cauchy Gorsaw, but equally powerful is a partial, is a converse to this, right? So now suppose the converse, and so this is Moreira's theorem. It says, suppose that, let me just make my life a little bit easier, so I suppose that omega is a domain, right? So suppose that f maps omega into c is continuous. Okay, so continuous is obviously what? Continuous is much, is much, much, much weaker than holomorphic, right? So continuous functions can be extremely wild, right? If you don't believe me, just think, of, for example, like a sample path of Brownian motion, right? Like a stock ticker, right? So if I take a sample path of Brownian motion, that's not, nowhere differentiable, right? So in other words, continuous functions can be wildly, wildly changing on every scale, right? As long as they just, roughly speaking, stay connected. It's continuous, and for every, that's important, for every triangle, we're assuming that for every triangle, T, Contained in what? Contained in omega, we have, we have what? We have the integral over that triangle is equal to zero. So if every tri if over every triangle you integrate to zero, okay, then f is holomorphic. This is a way of proving that something is holomorphic. If it's just Okay, so in other words, continuous and the integral over every triangle being equal to zero gives you that it's holomorphic. Whereas with Cauchy, if you're holomorphic, then the integral over triangle gives you zero, right? So it's a, it's a in some sense, this is a, a converse to Cauchy, right? It's a sort of converse. To cauchy Gorsa. Okay, and how do we prove it? So the the proof is actually, We've already proven it in some sense, and that's that's the beautiful thing about complex analysis. So recall proof. Recall that complex value functions have primitives if they're continuous. And the integral over any triangle of f of zeta d zeta is equal to zero. You might say, why? We proved this already in a, in a video. And what was the mechanism of proof? The mechanism of proof was the following. So let's draw it. And we'll do a couple examples of Morera. So here was the idea. The idea was that you had some set omega, right? And then there was a point, without loss of generality, let's say there's a point in, over here, you know, let's, let's suppose without loss of generality, that point is zero, okay? And there was a point over here, z, right? And so what you wanted to do is you wanted to say, well, I'm going to draw a line. Since it's open, I can always, if z is at least sufficiently close, since homomorphic is a local property, I can introduce sufficiently close. I draw a line like this. And then we look at a perturbation, z plus h, right? We looked at that z plus h. That point over there is z plus h. And so we had this configuration in the previous video. I'll, also, I'll put a link to it as well, right? And so what we did is we said, if we, want to, if we define now that f... If we define f capital of zeta, f capital of z is what? 
F capital of Z is the integral over this path, let's call that gamma Z. So I'll say just from zero to Z, this is the path from zero to Z basically, of F of zeta d zeta, right? And then we showed that F of Z plus H minus F of Z, what did we do with that? Well, we took a path, we went from like this, there was my Z, and then my z plus h. When you do minus f of z, the orientation of this is backwards, right? So the minus f of z puts this orientation like that. That's the minus f of z. And then the plus f of z h is gonna do what? Is it gonna move this way? So that integral is gonna completely cancel, like that. I get this little contribution over here, then this contribution over here, like that. And then what do I do? I close off this portion over here, like that, with a either that direction and then this direction. So one of the directions, I'm going completely clockwise around that rectangle R, so that's gonna give me zero. And then I have this direction over here, I have the straight over this direction, right? And then what I can do is I can close that off by doing this with a plus minus, right? And then implicitly, what have I done here? I have three triangles, and since I'm assuming that the value over all those triangles is equal to zero, I just, get, I just go along this segment from z to z plus h, right? So this is gonna be the integral from z to z plus h, f of zeta d zeta. And we showed in the previous video that if you divide this by h over here, what you'll get is the following. If you divide this by h, you're gonna see that f z plus h minus f of z, over h just converges to f of z. We proved that in a previous video. So that's just a quick recap of why it's important. So what did we do in that video? We said, oh, if the region, if I can put a, if the integral over a triangle is zero, then this is gone, this is gone, and this is gone, and you're able to write down this integral in a way that expresses it as basically, as long as you assume the function f is continuous, then the limit as h goes to zero of that ratio over there, you just break it up by continuity and show one part is small by continuity, and the other part is small because it's just gonna integrate out to just the arc length of something really, really small, it's just gonna be h, right? So everything going to zero basically. Good. So in other words, this argument, so we've already basically proven most of Morera, so all I have to do is say if the function is continuous, which we need continuity in this argument over here, so continuity of f is essential in this argument, and we also need what? The other component of this argument that we need is that it integrates to zero over any triangle, which it does by assumption of Morera. So conclusion follows. Excellent. So that's basically the proof of Morera in a nutshell, right? Excellent. And let me show you a comment, a very, very important application of this. So there's an application of Morera proposition. Suppose that Fn, suppose that Fn that Fn is a sequence of holomorphic functions on omega. Holomorphic. Converges uniformly. on compact subsets of omega. Like that. Okay. Now what do I mean by that? So in other words, I need the subsets of omega to be closed inside of omega and bounded inside of omega, okay? Excellent. Then, Fn converges to F, and F is holomorphic. That's the conclusion. Beautiful. So I have a sequence of holomorphic functions that converges uniformly on compact subsets of a region, then the limit function has to be holomorphic, okay? This is a very, very useful thing in applications, right, in, in particular problems. And so the proof is actually straightforward. Proof lets T be a subset of omega, be a triangle. Now, f is continuous, okay? So f is continuous because the uniform limit of continuous functions is continuous. It's continuous on t, certainly, right? And t continues in the region omega. Okay, so f is continuous and t is a triangle. And so now, what can I say? I can say that I can interchange limits and integrals by uniform convergence, so the limit as n goes to infinity of the integral over this triangle of fn of zeta d zeta by uniform convergence is the integral over the triangle t of f of z zeta d 
D zeta. That's from uniform convergence, right? So again, I'm using uniform uniform convergence. Now, what is each of these things? Fn is holomorphic. So each of those terms in this limit are zero. So my sequence over here is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So this is a sequence of all zeros. So the limit of that sequence is zero, which forces this to be zero. And that forces that says that f is continuous in an integral over any triangle, because the triangle is obviously a compact subset of that region, right? F is what? F is holomorphic. By Marrera. Beautiful. Typical application of Morera. We're going to actually see when we start to study the structure of singularities of, of meromorphic functions or functions that, if I allow a complex value function of a singularity, we start to analyze the singularities. One of the most elementary types of singularities is a removable singularity. If a function has a removable singularity, we're going to use Morera to prove that I, can that I can analytically extend it to a neighborhood of that singularity. So in other words, Morera's theorem is going to say, if a, if a function has a removable singularity, Morera's theorem allows you to sort of look at that point locally. You can say, if I can draw a disk over here, and if the function is holomorphic ever, except for that one particular point, and if I can continuously extend it by having a limit exist over there, then Morera's theorem will tell you that it not only continuously extends to that point, but also analytically or holomorphically extends to that point. So a very, very powerful theorem, which at first blush, you might be surprised when you when you reference Morera's theorem in every book, every proof of Morera's theorem is like one line long, and basically just this. It would say that complex value functions, that continuous complex value functions have primitives if they integrate to zero over any triangle or any toy con uh, toy like contra basic like a rectangle also works in this case, right? So they'll say, since it has a primitive, it's automatically holomorphic done, right? So the proofs are very, very short, but the result is very powerful in terms of saying that you oftentimes want to say, is f, is a function holomorphic? It's oftentimes much easier to think of it as a limit, in some sense, of a sequence of holomorphic functions that converges uniformly on a particular domain in the complex plane. Thank you very much.